Stephanie, um, hi guys, I'm Beverly. Um, first of all, I want to thank the um, organizing team of um, GoforCon 2018 for, for this awesome event and for also inviting us here. So, um, as Stephanie said, I'll be talking about Go and the future of offices. So, um, first, I'll, I'll tell you first how I, how I found out of Go. So, a friend of mine, when he found out that I'm going to work on a new startup, um, and I was like looking for tools to use to build the platform for that startup, he mentioned that, you know what, I, we're just starting to use Go. And, and, and he said like he really liked it, and, and this person is someone that I respected. So I kind of like, okay, I'll, like, I'll take a look at it. So when I did, first thing I did when I learned a new language is that try out, I mean, try to see how I can implement the things that I needed to implement. First, for this new project, we needed to make sure that we were able to create like PDF files for the invoices. We need to make sure that we are able to read from config files, access databases, and whatnot. So that's how I that's how I learn about Go. And when I found and when I feel comfortable that Go has all the libraries that I needed to implement our system, I said yes. <laughs> so. Um, I'm from SpaceMob, so that's the, the, that's the startup that I was talking about. We're building um, SpaceMob. So SpaceMob is a co-working space that is based in, here in Singapore. Um, it's focused on Asia-Pacific region. So we have three locations here in Singapore, Claymore, SpaceMob Ascent, and Gamma Tower in Indonesia. We started off with 1.5 engineer and one product. Why 1.5? Because my friend who, I, who, who informed me about Go, who told me about Go, I asked him to come and, and be a consultant for us. So he kind of helped us out to, to build our infrastructure and to help me um, learn more about the AWS infrastructure because I don't have any experience on that. So, <laughs> so he was helping me out on that. So our goal is to make sure that, so since we're only like 1.5 engineer and he's not a full-time engineer with us, I have to make sure that when we design this new platform, so we have two options basically. One is we just go ahead and, and get this co-working applications that other co-working spaces are using and just customize it for our own. Or build it from scratch. And the engineer in me kind of wanted more, so we go and build it from scratch. So we need to make sure that this, um, this application or this platform is flexible and easy to maintain. It integrated user experience in physical space and online. It supports multi-language, supports local currency and payment methods, support local tax and invoice structure, local specific subscription, plan, adds add-ons, space configuration, one-time charge, and recurring payments. When somebody asked me, like, why are you working in a co-working space? You're just renting offices. I actually laugh at him because he doesn't know how complicated it is. <laughs> it's system-wise. So then we kind of figure out, like, okay, we need to use, like, third-party services for us to build this system. So we are using um, Amazon. We're using Stripe and Adyen for the payment gateway. Open exchange rate. We have integration with Slack as well. We use Mandrill for our transactional emails. We use Phrase app for our, um, for our translations. Paper cut for our printing access all over, um, through all the three locations of SpaceMob. And Salto for our door locking systems that we will integrate as well. So Go in SpaceMob. We use Go in all our backend systems. Our API is the business logic of the whole SpaceMob ecosystem, and it powers all user-facing applications, web and iOS, supporting 192 endpoints. Basically, it's a monolith. <laughs> our web servers is also are also written in Go. That powers our marketing website, members portal, admin portal, and captive login. We also have utility of applications that sends reminders, notifications, recurring invoices, member cancellations, meeting rooms, locking and unlocking of doors. What I'm saying here is that Go is very, uh, we use Go extensively in our ecosystem. I mean, that's the one that powers our back end, basically. So this is our architecture diagram. So what we wanted is a simple to maintain. Since most probably I'll be the only engineer managing this, I want it to be more flexible. So we're just using, so what 
when, when we deploy, we just deploy the Go binary and a config file on S3, and all our machines, when it restarts, it just downloads that and run it. I like the simplicity of it. I like that it's easy to maintain. Therefore, we go with this approach. We're also using Redis for token management. We're using Elasticsearch for indexing, and we use DynamoDB for this case. Flexibility through configurations. Since we're uh, due to the fact that there's only one engineer full-time, which is me, back-end, I want to make sure that as much as possible, when there's new use cases or new plans or new subscriptions type, we don't have to change our code every time. So we use a lot of configurations. So we store these configurations into our database. For example, adding new taxes and fees. In Singapore, there's a different tax system compared to Indonesia. It's just a matter of us adding this configuration there, and that's it. The other is a new subscription type with bundles, like sales wanted to offer this new plan. We just create a new configuration that has bundles defined. And also, like when we need to convert or to update the behavior of a certain meeting room, like this one, it's only open on Mondays to Friday. If we wanted to open it on weekends, we can just add the days there. So it's easy to maintain, and we don't have to go back and forth and just to, just to update it for a new business um, logic. So this is the ecosystem of um, SpaceMob. We have a member portal. We have admin portal, marketing site, iPad receptionist, meeting room app, uh, uh, e-wallet, uh, POS app. Uh, we integrate with a lock, um, cloud-based door locking integration, Wi-Fi access control, and printing. So all this are all just um, um, using the, the back end, basically, the API. So this is just a uh, marketing website that I was telling about, and this is this members portal where members can see their subscriptions, add-ons, and top-up credits. I'm just going through this because I want you to see like, how much work does the back end does for us. So these are all the user-facing applications. So um, we have here dashboards and occupancy map tools. We also have the printing service. So this is a secure, meaning they're the only ones who can um, print their own um, documents and nobody else. They can also do top up of printing credits. There's a checking app also. Everything here is um, developed in-house. So we have our checking app. We use QR code um, so that when they come in, for example, somebody book a tour on our website, we will send them an email with a QR code. And when they come in, they don't have to fill in the form anymore. They just scan the QR code, and they will be checked in. This is another check-in experience for members. So we do have memberships that are on a daily basis or a day-to-day -day basis. When they do come into our space, they need to check in every time. If they don't, they won't get access to anything. <laughs> so when they do, they can actually like just check in again using their wallet. They have an identity there. They can just scan there, and then it will, it will take them through the, through the check-in. If they run out of day passes, this, this check-in app will also allow them to buy the credits. So if you notice here, um, they can define like credit cards in their app. And then what it does is that it creates a QR code representation of that credit card that they can use inside our space. So again, Wi-Fi. So the reason why we need people to log in is because even if guests, if they don't check into our space or our members, they won't get access to our Wi-Fi. So we just need to make sure that our members are secured as well. So if they don't check in, they won't be able to access the Wi-Fi. So this is the meeting room app. So you can display the occupancy status, the view availability, and in those, uh, this, meeting room, this meeting room app is actually in, uh, in every door of our meeting rooms. So if you want to book there, right there and there, you can just select the, the timing and then scan the QR code in your um, Space Map member app, and then it, you will automatically pay for the meeting room booking. And then we also have the payment app. So previously, we have a cafe inside our office. So instead of them pay paying cash, they pay via, via the credit card that they added on their mobile, uh, on their members portal app. We also have Slack integration. So anyone who checks in um, um, for a tour, or anyone who checks in for a day tour, or a meeting ended or started, we notify the, the, um, the communities themselves. And also, we do have a chatbot as well. 
automated billing system, so makes payments easier. So um, every month we, we, we run a uh, there's a script that runs and validates whether we need to send out like new invoices to the members. And also like um, we have like the PDF versions of all those invoices. And we also have like, um, as I mentioned, we are integrated with Adyen and Stripe. Switching to Adyen or Stripe is just a matter of configuration also. And also we support like prorated recurring or one-time charges. Reporting, we also have reporting. Yeah, but throughout all that, with all those things that, that we have done, th as the company grew, there are new business models and features need to be supported by the platform. And sometimes, since I'm the only back-end engineer, um, <laughs> we, hire, we hire one more front-end and one iOS engineer. So it's kind of like a tight team, <laughs> a very small team. <laughs> so I have to make sure that I still have a life after. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there are some things that we need to decide. We, there are compromises, but what we want there, so we accumulated a few tech debts, and a few of them are I, I listed here, which is like, um, we wanted to, com co to, to convert our monolith into microservices, um, better test coverage, and continuous integration. But then something unexpected happened. We work acquired Space Mob on October 27. So the now we are part of the technology department, which is at 300 employees right now, and by end of this year, it will grow to 600. Um, we have technology centers in New York, Tel Aviv, San Francisco, Monte Video in Uruguay, Shanghai, and Singapore. So now our team here in Singapore owns the global product of mapping services. Mapping services, so now the mission, our mission changes because now we need to make sure that our stakeholders and our members can navigate all spaces of WeWork, 230 of them, and manage any through the use of the interactive floor plans. So this is like a sample of uh, a view of what the tool looks like, visualizing space. So through the interactive floor plans, other teams in WeWork can overlay data of occupancy, wayfinding, spacious utilization, bookings, and member directory. And yes, we use Go on our backend to support these functionalities. Go in WeWork. We have Golang Guild in WeWork. I was so happy when I found out that we do have, so I started chatting with them, and I met some of them when I went to New York. There are several products besides the mapping services being developed that use Go as part of their tech stack. But see, the, the thing is with offices, I mean, right now people are not just looking for a space. They're looking for more. They're looking for an ecosystem that allows them to pursue what they really like to do and to do it better and in more efficient and more successful way. It's not enough anymore that you put them in, with the, in a room with a chair and with a table. They want more. And I think that invites more creativity and more productivity also on the, on the, on the user's end. So what's the future of offices? The way people work is changing. Um, teams are more mobile, mobile than ever, empowering them to be productive and on the go. With hundreds of locations worldwide, they can have access to thousands of workspaces now and conferences around the world. A city can be your campus. Let's simplify things. When you can just book a location, swipe your key card, connect to Wi-Fi, and get to work. And then you have everything that you need there, coffee, printing, and su supportive staff. And then therefore, you can save more time. So I think that's the f future of offices, like less of the operationals, more on really focusing on what you do best. In our company, we're always learning. For us to launch 20 locations per month, we use technology to allow us to gather data, aspects of building a location, from highly structured auto re Autodesk Revit models, for, for system coordination, cost estimation, construction layout, and operation. What this does to our company using that, those technology is that it cuts down our um, construction time, making it more cost effective, and efficiently launch buildings of great quality. And with real-time data on how our spaces are used, many member companies are also learning how their teams work helping them optimize for their employee success. Okay, so this is the last, almost last slide. What? So why go? So why did I, why did I push for go to still be used in this project that we had in WeWork? 
I think because it's a destiny. I, I found Go when I needed the, the tool, and I found it at the right place and at the right time. It makes me feel better as a developer. I focus more on implementing our business logic rather than working around the tool that I'm using. And one is that it has a growing community. So thank you. And, and before I go, I want to show you, like, since I'm, my topic is future of, of offices, I want to share you about this project that we just launched in New York about the future of offices and how, how offices can be a responsive environment later on. Thank you, guys. Uh, we have one question. Uh, what front-end frameworks do you use to build the web apps? Um, so we're using React JS. Yeah. OK. I think that's it. Yeah, that's, that's it. If, if anybody else has any other questions. One question? Huh? Sorry. So how, how we deploy is actually, um, since we only have the Go binary in the config file, what we do is we upload it to S3. And then from S3, all the AMIs are configured to download the new, S3, the new configuration in the binary. Hmm. Okay. Uh, any other questions? OK. okay. Uh, in that case, thank you, Beverly. Thank you. Thank you.